mankind by the Crescent Corporation. Any and all information contained within this recording is prohibited to people under level 8 clearance. Their state is a Class D hazard. Any and all usage has the potential to result in death, dismemberment, and having your body overtaken by a hostile, sentient entity. Do not wait a fifth level. Do not watch this video. Welcome to Category 1. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Sylvester Jacobs, and today we're going to be talking about Anomaly 20-5-3-8, otherwise known as the Machine. AN 20-5-3-8 is a machine located under an office building in the city of Rainherd. This machine has been described as sentient and made up of metal components, flash parts and other elements that resemble bones of some sort, however no complete description has ever been given. The anomaly is the centre of its city and its people, creating anomalous websites and apps to entice people on the outside to come visit the city for a holiday. It then takes these people and converts them into residents, faceless extensions of itself that work to improve and progress the machine in size for an unknown reason. The anomaly first came to the attention of Crescent via a glitch that was made present in staff phones, computers, and other technology. This glitch was only noticed 24 hours after the owner of the phone or computer talked about wanting to go on holiday or to travel to previous travelling experiences and holidays. The glitch itself takes the form of a link to a website, multiple websites, social media accounts, apps, as well as corrupted code in other websites not related to AN 20-5-3-8. These websites are taken down and blocked from regular computers and phones within the general population of Earth. However, with every link comes a new website, and as soon as the company takes one website down, another seemingly appears as a replacement. These websites, accounts, apps and links are to attract people to visit the city of Rainherd. After someone speaks of holidays or travel, or in some cases they haven't even spoken at all, the website slash websites appear. After they are viewed, the victim then feels an overwhelming sense of nostalgia for previous trips away and is then overpowered by the feeling of wanting to go to Rainhead. This overwhelming sensation has been ruled out as being higher influence. More on that later. Side note, anyone affected by the website is referred to as new guests, Rainhead's top priority. Like most tourist websites, this one at first shows images of beautiful buildings and landscapes. This then changes. As the more each website is explored, the images change to real images within the city, specifically the horrific events that actually happen there, videos from phones and images of new guests. However, at this point, the person viewing is completely convinced to go and cannot be stopped under any circumstance. Like a burning desire that slowly drives you insane if you don't do what it asks, the website makes you come to Rainherd almost immediately after viewing the website and makes you bring as many people as possible. This event is documented in AN 20-5-3-8 file 2, wherein a group of friends go to the city after one of them was subjected to a website that was later taken down. One member of the group recorded the whole event through a documentary-like found footage film, as they all seem genuinely excited to be going to this place from, quote, what they've heard. Once the group arrives, the residents seem normal, talking like friendly people and having eyes and mouths. However, after six hours, the person who saw the website vanishes, and the group then see the residents for what they really are. They then attempt to escape, however, get taken one by one to the office building, where the camera feed cuts out until it resurfaces outside of one of the city's entrances, with additional footage attempting to bring more people in. 
The additional footage is like an 80s PSA VHS video showing all of the best bits of the city and the friendly people. The group of friends were later spotted as residents. However, all this information so far has been merely a war. What are the residents? What makes them so different from new guests? Why does this machine that lives under the city make websites and such to bring more people in and what does it do to them? Well, we will get to the finer details momentarily. The following is an example of code stripped from one of the websites designed by the machine. Other anomalous sections of code have been found in popular websites such as Google Maps and Deliveroo. These use similar text examples found in websites created by the machine itself. The only link to AN 20-5-3-8 are the similarities. No conclusive proof has yet been given, however it is still being researched into. After the glitch and the footage was found, Crescent set up camp around the city and kept it under constant surveillance. With the idea of going inside the city to attempt to figure out what was causing the anomaly and preventing new guests from entering the city at all costs. According to records, this has happened hundreds of times to hundreds of different people, and once they arrive at the city, they then disappear within it. One week later, they are spotted by Crescent as residents of Rainherd and are working like they have been there for years, for the machine. The residents, referred to as Dash A, are almost exactly the same as they were when they first entered, wearing the same clothes. However, unlike when they went in, they no longer have a face. Their eyes and mouths vanished, being replaced by skin, the only feature of their face being their noses. Crescent apprehended six of the Dashes and dissected them. Most of their body organs and other functions remain the same as a regular human. However, their blood is brown and laced with motor oil and other unknown substances. Their heart has unknown metal components contained within it, and their brains are augmented with motors and other engine-like parts of a machine. More info on the residents later in the document. Bodies were also found upon the first setup of Crescent's observation camp. These entities are bodies of failed residents. The following is an autopsy file on one of the said bodies. It was later revealed that the first 26 new guests failed the process that turned them into residents, leaving them empty otherwise known as husks. These husks are completely lifeless, their blood being a mixture of normal human blood, motor oil, and other unknown components, similar to the residents. Their eyes completely missing and sockets bleeding profusely. The same goes with the subject's teeth, all being completely removed with two additions of sharp, ragged, and rusted metal. These samples were later revealed to be made up of stainless steel. The husks also controllably bleed from their mouths. Reason as to why is not yet conclusive. The following is an audio recording taken from an Olympus Pearlcorder S701 microcassette dictaphone. For those not in the know, this specific audio device was released in 1985, holding a microcassette and coming in a variety of colours. The one found on the borders of Rainherd was in mint condition and looked like it had been kept well and looked after since release. Further tests show, however, the recording device was over 20 years old. The following is the recording taken from the device. So, if you're listening to this, then, then I'm dead. Well, I, I, I fucking hope not, but... I'm, I'm the last one left. My, my name is Scott Gable. I live in Santry, Markland. Ryan Withers, Alex Nixon and Jonathan Marks, and they are now dead. I, I, Alex said he'd seen this, like, sales thing for this... Fuck. Their faces, they don't have faces. It's fucking singing. Oh, for God, it's fucking singing.
Six months prior to this audio document, the company began feeling anxious about the lack of new guests. However, after a surge of children began appearing outside, um, alongside confused families, a search was conducted of their phones. Turns out, an app was found that had been downloaded from the App Store or Google Play called... <coughs> this app worked the same way as the websites and has been taken down since, as well as all other apps that have been made after that point. It is also noted that new guests posted about the city on their social media accounts, enticing new people to come and see what happens and how amazing it is. After over 800 more people showed up wanting to enter, the request to send a team in to evaluate and figure out what was causing these anomalies was accepted. The following is referred to as Project Red Pill. Mobile Task Force Unit, MTFU Shade, was sent in. After arriving in the city under the cover of darkness, MTFU Shade, consisting of 10 members, all heavily armed and trained, were notified that their body cameras were not in use and they later confirmed that they would not turn on. They then began making notes on resident behaviour. The faceless drones, otherwise known as the residents, were still walking about. None of them went to bed or stopped working in any way. Some carried mechanical parts into the office building, which was later found to be the machine's home. The task force made more notes on the speed and efficiency the residents worked in, welding metal from cars that were left from people that came here, to go into the office building and within 10 minutes come out to write unknown documents on advanced computers, to then immediately loop back around and restart the whole process, each time with a different part of metal, flesh or body component. However, the last couple of loops, distant screaming could be heard from within the office building. As multiple residents rush inside, the screaming soon stops and the production line starts up again. The final loop round, before MTFU Shade move into the office building and the city itself, multiple screams could be heard. However, the residents froze still and the production line stopped. Shade took their chance and immediately went to investigate as more screaming continued. The units were requested to split into six and four six to go into the office building and four to examine and investigate the computers and documents in which the residents were writing. MTFU Shade Group 2 consists of four members and MTFU Shade Group 1 consists of six. Both of the following logs take place simultaneously. Both are in contact with two separate people. Log 1. Group 2 walk into one of the houses. The house was eerily empty and quiet. The light remained the same tone and everything was, quote, too clean. Group 2 are as follows. E924, otherwise known as Felix Jones. E021, otherwise known as Aaron Carlington. E444, otherwise known as Lisa Simmons. And E76, otherwise known as Luke Wilkins. Group 2 wandered different houses and flats and apartment complexes each empty with lights on but no furniture or any life signs at all. However, then they reach house 4. The following is an audio document from what they found. Can one of you please describe the house you have just entered? This place is way too clean. What's the dash A doing? Just a single chair on the table, no other furniture. Please describe the state of the resident and what is on the computer screen. Two of you stay and keep watch. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, it seems I'm dazed by the fact we're here, like it's shut off. Uh, the screen shows different logs of some kind. It says uh, temp 606 failure, temp 607 failure, temp 608 success. Bonding has been complete. That's not disturbing at all, considering it sounded like a fuckload of kids screaming a minute ago. Let's try and take the computer and get it back home, then we can come back to help group one. Yeah, I am completely fine with leaving Freakyville for a couple of minutes. I second that, strongly. fucking move. It's like it's fucking bonded to the table, and the table to the floor or something. See if you can download any documents off it onto one of the hard drives you have. There's no USB ports or any other ports of any kind for anything like that. 
Alright, I regroup with group one. We'll have to send in camera equipment and other interfaces in order to extract those documents. On it. Let's backtrack and take the short way round to the office complex. Simon and that should that be- thing just fucking move. I, I swear it just twitched. Well, the dash A. Yeah, yeah, ju just like that. Move for just a second. Uh, you know when you, you kind of cramp when you stay still, still for too long and your body just moves a bit? Yeah. Like, like that. Wait, wait, hang on, is that... The following log is from Group 1. While Group 2 prepare to enter the house, Group 1 are outside the office building, observing the residents that stand in the corridors and by the entrance. Group 1 consists of E337, otherwise known as Simon Carter, E009, otherwise known as Elise Thornton, E55, otherwise known as Aaron Isaacs, E662, otherwise known as Elizabeth March, E23, otherwise known as Nicole Page-Smith, and E998, otherwise known as Rohan Martins. Begin playback. Okay, Group 1, please proceed inside the building. Okay, we're going in. Please, can you, uh, describe the office building? It's like school when you're there after it's closed. It's dark, creepy. And I feel like my English teacher is in the ceiling sleeping. Well, that was not specific. Yeah, I had a very messy childhood. The stores on the first floor are all empty. Home, we're coming back up. We're bringing 15 
children with us. The thing above the abyss doesn't appear to be moving it. Fuck, it stinks. Aim, I'm prepared to get these kids the fuck out of here. What the actual fuck is this thing? Nothing. Weak insects. With no hope of contemplating my existence. You hold no understanding of the universe. Or the nature of its existence. It's just a mystery. Why do you bother me? Our existences are not the same. I am better. You are not. So hungry. Insects! Hiding from the inevitability of your own demise. Hiding from what is to come. Your silent state. Even though the mad god will be arriving soon, you will not live to see the day he does. For when he finds me, all shall be vanquished. All shall be swallowed up by the silent state. Who are you hiding from? Okay, look. If you let us and these kids go, the people we work for can hide you and give you all the food you want. You won't need to do this. You will be safe. You cannot hide me from him, and you cannot provide me my food. The human children shall never leave, and neither shall you. Both Group 1 and Group 2 of Mobile Task Force Unit Shade are pronounced dead after their audio feed cuts out. What Anomaly 20-5-3-8 knows of the silent state is unknown, however the mentioning of Anomaly 1 is indeed worrying. Perhaps this being is hiding from... More research is required. Tests examining the depth of the cave system the machine exists in show that there is no cave, Further tests and examinations show that a cave under the city cannot exist where Shade said it did. There is no cave under that city. So a theory was proposed. Crescent got in touch with Ravanian Wharf under the suspicion that the staircase led to some kind of pocket dimension, or some form of reality breach so that the machine could exist undisturbed. After four hours of testing, officials from Ravanian Wharf confirmed the suspicion. The staircase down leads to some alternate pocket dimension, a stairway to a prison that the machine itself uses. After Project Red Pill, Crescent launched Project Sabotage, a collective of eight different MTFUs with the aligned goal of taking every single resident away from the city and planting explosives throughout every building and throughout the dimensional cave system. The idea was to sabotage this being's plan and threaten it into submission, Something powerful enough to know when you're talking about going on holiday is powerful enough to spread to every computer system on planet Earth and take over. Project Sabotage is to sabotage this idea and get this being to work for the company under the same guidelines that E337 offered, to keep it safe and out of sight, as well as to feed it what it wants regularly. 
Dr. Susanna Reed theorised that the machine needs to extend itself. In order for it to not emanate so much power, the more little versions of it there are, the better. Because if it is only one form, then it will be found by whoever he is. The Doctor, alongside other teams, began researching company knowledge and files of powerful deities that match the descriptions given by the anomaly. After one week of testing, they came up with an answer. <laughs> Project Sabotage was underway. However, after unexpected ambushes and two task force units were ripped apart, the collective would give every resident was decommissioned. Office company. The following has been offered has made and is not available for the self-orientation. Please. Input your ID credentials to see more. Good evening. My name is Dr. Sylvester Jacobs, and if you are hearing this, then you are above the level 9 classification. As you are probably now aware, the audio you have just listened to was intentionally corrupted in order to prevent regular staff from giving it any attention. The warning at the beginning of the video itself being the forefront for said diversion. If you have made it this far, then I regret to inform you that the story... It only gets worse from here. Crescent required the events of Project Sabotage and all information gained during the siege to be redacted, hidden beyond clearance, and only to be listened to when the event occurs. So, if you are hearing this, then... Then God help you. The Abyss is there for a reason. Project Sabotage was a collective of the following eight Mobile Task Force unit groups. Mobile Task Force Unit, The Death Harbingers, Mobile Task Force Unit, The Nightshades, Mobile Task Force Unit, Midnight, Mobile Task Force Unit, Bleak Horizon, Mobile Task Force Unit, The Devil's Pigeon, Mobile Task Force Unit, Ironmonger, Mobile Task Force Unit, Cache, and Mobile Task Force Unit, Impaler. The plan was simple. All eight Mobile Task Force Units enter via Rainherd's eight entrances decommission every resident, place explosives in every building and throughout the uh, dimensional cave system that Anomaly 20-5-3-8 exists in, force it into submission and ask the questions. The questions will be revealed later. Each unit entered the city through the eight entrances with armoured tank units, beginning with the decommissioning of the city's residents and putting them in the storage compartment of their vehicles. However, after five minutes, the residents began attacking the task forces. After a two-hour siege, six units were dead and every resident had been decommissioned. The audio file for this massacre can be found in... The remaining two teams then planted explosives throughout the entire city without resistance. They then approached the office building. MTFU Ironmonger, consisting of its last three members, E8880, Rosanna Richards, E552, Jose Macchiana, and E28, Jason Chase. And secondly, MTFU The Death Harbingers, consisted of its last two, E111, Michael Feltworthy, and E90, Olivia Redwood. The remaining members met up and entered the office building as one unit, giving similar descriptions that Mobile Task Force Unit Shade gave during Os Operation Red Pill. The group remarks on the heartbeat in the walls, however this time described it as heavily elevated and seemingly panicked as they descended into the pocket dimension. The audio file oddly was not cut out or corrupted during this process. Most details could actually be heard and the following is the log. I cannot feel threats, or you'll quarrel with me. 
The one that caused the war, that used Typhon and his other siblings to try and take over. He is coming, and there will be nothing that this universe can do to stop him. Who? Genesis. Okay, look. It's clear that this whole fucking thing is a lot fucking bigger than we thought it was. And this is not a fucking job for five people with guns to fuck around with. So we'll give you a chance. The last group of people who worked with us that came here gave you a plan. We hide you from whoever the fuck Genitus is. We feed you what you want, and yeah, I guess that means we give you souls, which makes us just as bad as you. But the explosives, they don't go. Any sign that you try to backstab us, we detonate. Capiche? Desolation of those explosives would be unwise, as your universe would be wiped out if Typhon were to escape and set his buildings. Set his buildings, yes, of course. Set his siblings free of their prisons. Fine. We will feed you what you want when you want. Crescent. Or should I say sifts? Craze for control only takes it so far. You have no impact on me nor my work. Why should I let you keep bothering and observing me? Because if you don't, we will kill you. We will either stun you to sleep, or detonate those bombs and bring about the apocalypse. And I'm guessing whoever is above you won't be happy if Typhon escapes, huh? So this is not really a bargain. It's more of a fucking command. What the fuck? Somebody shoot it! I accept your terms. I need souls. I apologize for your friend. However, one life does not equate to the end of everything. Now bring me what I require. Project Sabotage was not exactly a failure. The machine, or should I say Akarath, did exactly what was wanted of it. However, the question remains, if... If the explosives didn't matter, then why did the machine, Akarath, let the company threaten it? Unless... Unless he knew that that's what the bargain would be. But if he knew that, then that means... That means that he's playing us. I guess we will have to wait to find out, won't we? If you've got this far, thank you for listening. I know it's been a tedious and rather exhausting journey, however I hope you've come to learn the importance of this anomaly and how it led Crescent into a new age of research, specifically into the first gods, the Shadowcast, so to speak. Next week I will talk about Anomaly uh, 7802, When I Fall From Grace, and well, that keeps up with the theme anyway. Um, and Anomaly 8 15 12 5, The Abyss Below the Nursery. Uh, I'm also due to send in my report for Anomaly 13 15 15 14, Eclipse, that I did yesterday. So, yeah. Even with all this, the looming threat of Genidus still remains. With every passing day, things just get a little bit worse. And every day the anomalies get that much more afraid of what's coming. Or for some of them, excited. I'll leave that one with you. This is Dr. Sylvester Jacobs, signing off.